was there a moment where you actually did start to set goals? It may be in between the Olympics, the first and the second one. But if yeah. you if you were setting goals, was there a strategy? And I'm always keen to find out like how people set their goals and the ways in which they structure it, especially in Olympics as well, because of that four year four year period. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good point with the four year period because that's like a really challenging four years mm. because it's hard to stay like, at that that high for so long. Uh, but it's also hard to really grind that long for four years too. But uh, honestly, when I made my first Olympic team, immediately my second goal was, my first goal was to make a second team. So as soon as I got a taste of what 2000 Olympics was like, I was like, I want to do that again. So that goal was immediately, let's do it again. Um, and then my two years following my first Olympics was just really rough. I was hurt. I was broken down. I was, um, got sick a lot. Um, so that was a tough tough go for me. And then basically the goal was just to get healthy again. Uh, the goal was to get my form back so I could be in contention for a second Olympic team. Um, and then when things started kind of clicking and coming back together, uh, right around, you know, a year and a half out from my the Olympic trials, I was getting really stuck at a, at a, a time for in the 400 I am, which was my best race. And it was a plateau. Like every time I raced, I was like at four minutes and 40 seconds. So I, I had this goal and it wasn't even very specific. Like literally it was break 440. And it's because I've been so stuck at this plateau, like I would have taken like a 439.99. That was my goal. And that was like a personal goal. Obviously my coaches knew that, but I was just so frustrated in this event that I was like, ah, if I don't break this, I'm just not going to do this race anymore. And it was my best race. And it was like, really frustrating to not go a best time for like almost like four and a half years. Uh, so it, things kind of started falling into place because I got healthy, which was one of my goals. I was back on track, which was a goal. I ended up making my second Olympic team, which was a goal. And then at my second Olympics, I smashed the 440 barrier. And I was like, check. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think, I think it's okay to have like pretty broad goals. You know, I don't think it needs to be down to the 10th hundredth millisecond. Um, I just think we have to be realistic and you know, what's going to make you happy. And for me, I was going to be happy to be healthy again. And I was going to be really happy to be at a second Olympics again. And I'll be really, really happy breaking this time and, and doing a, a PR. But I think one of the best advice I could give somebody training is just always set a goal to do your best. And that's why when I would go to a meet, I wouldn't set a specific time other than go a best time because you've never been that fast before. So even if it's this much faster, like just a, a fraction, half of the fingernail, you've never been that good before. So you should be happy with that. Like, why would you be disappointed if it wasn't like two seconds faster? I mean, sometimes you have to be ba like take baby steps and you can't get selfish and you can't get so like wrapped up in, in not thinking big picture because I think too, as you get older and as, and, and as you get pretty good, it gets even harder to be better. So you need to celebrate those small, like inner, you know, personal victories of being the best that you've ever been before. Um, and I don't think you should like compare yourself to others. Like you just, you can't control the uncontrollables and obviously set a goal of winning, but like at the same time, like if you do your best time, but you get third, you should still embrace that. 